Welcome to the level 1 economics summary video series. This video is a summary of the reading on the firm and market structures. With perfect competition we have many firms, barriers to entry very low, nature of substitutes, all the products sold are very close substitutes, competition is on the basis of price and no player really has pricing power. In monopolistic competitions, we still have many firms, but often less than the number of firms in a in perfect competition. Barriers to entry are again low. The big distinction between monopolistic competition and perfect competition is that in monopolistic competition, there are substitutes, but there is also some differentiation. Classic example with monopolistic competition would be toothpaste, where one toothpaste is a reasonable substitute of another, but every toothpaste company will try and say why its toothpaste is special. And because of that differentiation, marketing and features become very important. And if a company can differentiate its product sufficiently, then obviously it can charge a higher price and therefore there is some pricing power. With an oligopoly, we have a few firms, so two or three or maybe four, Barriers to entry tend to be high, which is why we have few firms. Often they are very close substitutes, but you can also have a situation where the products are differentiated. So substitute or differentiated, that is not a major issue in an oligopoly. Price, marketing and features, so these are the basis of competition and pricing power might be significant for some companies. In a monopoly, we just have a single firm and barriers to entry are very high, no good substitutes, that's why we have a monopoly. Nature of competition is generally based on advertising and pricing power can be significant. You need to understand the demand characteristics of the four structures. With perfect competition, the price is equal to marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost. This is what happens in equilibrium. The Demand curve for a company, an individual supplier in a perfectly competitive market is elastic. So we have a horizontal demand curve. But when you talk about the market, then the demand curve will obviously be downward sloping. With a monopolistic competition, the price can be greater than marginal revenue. But for profit maximization across all structures, marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost. So make sure you know this relationship. So profit is max when marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost. With monopolistic competition, we have a downward sloping demand curve for a given firm. And the general theory is that in the long run, the economic profit will be zero also for a monopolistic competition. With an oligopoly, the price is greater than marginal revenue, but as always for profit maximization, marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost. Demand curve is downward sloping, may have positive economic profit in the long run. So with perfect competition and monopolistic competition, we do not have positive economic profit in the long run. With oligopoly, we can, but it would still most probably tend towards zero economic profit. With a monopoly, again, price can be greater than marginal revenue, but what a monopoly will try to do, unless it is regulated otherwise, is it will try to make marginal revenue equal to marginal cost and therefore maximize its profit. The demand curve is downward sloping. It might actually have an economic profit in the long run. It is possible though that profits may be zero because of expenditures to preserve the monopoly. Special considerations for the monopoly. A natural monopoly refers to a situation where average cost of production is falling over the relevant range of consumer demand. Having two or more producers would result in a significantly higher cost of production and would be detrimental to consumers. So, the point here is that even consumers might be better off if you have a monopoly with a decreasing cost curve. So because of the decreasing cost curve, the monopoly can produce at a very low cost 
and then hopefully also sell at a relatively low price. If two or three firms enter, then the cost for each of those firms would be high and therefore the price charge to the consumer would also be high. Left unregulated, a monopoly will maximize profits by producing the quantity for which marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost and then charge the price indicated on the demand curve for that quantity and maximize its producer surplus. Those who have studied this diligently before can probably visualize the graphs that are behind these statements. At this stage though, I just want you to visualize this and remember the fact. As always, marginal revenue equals marginal cost for profit maximization. Government regulation may attempt to improve resource allocation by requiring average cost pricing or marginal cost pricing. Average cost pricing is where the government or the regulator says that your price has to be equal to average cost. Marginal cost pricing is where the regulator says that the price must equal marginal cost. If the marginal cost is less than average total cost, then the government may need to subsidize. Regulators may also attempt to remove artificial barriers to trade such as licensing requirements, quotas and tariffs. So if a monopoly is created because of some barriers to trade, then what the regulator might do is try to remove those barriers. This is important. You need to know the measures of concentration of an industry. The two big measures are the infirm concentration ratio and the herfindahl hirschman index, more easily referred to as HHI. The infirm concentration ratio is the sum of the percentage market shares of n largest firms in an industry. So you will see the term or hear the term, the four firm concentration ratio. That means we are taking the top four firms, taking their market shares and adding those numbers. If you get a large number, that means we have a few major players and that would imply that the industry is concentrated. HHI is the sum of the squared market shares of the n largest firms in the market. And here again, when you are given an HHI, you will be told that this is HHI for 5 firms or 10 firms or 8 firms. So for every firm, you take a market share in decimal and square it and then add the squared number for whatever number of firms you have. If you have a monopoly, then what's the market share of the one company? It is 1. The square of 1 is 1. So you will have an HHI of 1. A number close to 1 indicates high concentration. If you have perfect competition with lots of small players, and let's say that the average player has a market share of 1%, so in decimal terms that's 0.01, you square that and you get 0 0.0001 and then even if you add 10 of the biggest firms, you will still be at only 0 0.001. So if you are close to zero, that means that the level of concentration is very low. High competition means low concentration and low competition means high concentration. Oligopoly models. If you are not on top of this material at this stage, three or four weeks before the exam, I would not get too hung up. Just let us read these basic points. And I think this is my gut feeling that if one of these does show up, then most probably it would either be the kinked demand curve model or the Nash equilibrium. The kinked demand curve model is based on an assumption that a firm's competitors will not follow a price increase but will cut their prices in response to a price decrease by a competitor. And you can relate this to Coke and Pepsi. So if Coke cuts prices, then most probably Pepsi will also cut prices. If Coke increases prices, then most probably Pepsi will not increase. Each firm faces the demand curve with a kink at the current market price and the demand curve is more elastic above the current price because if you increase your price, then your demand will fall a lot. Your competitor, your competitor is not increasing, so your demand will fall a lot. But if you decrease your price and the competitor also decreases price, then the impact on quantity demanded will be not as much. So that explains the comment here. Nash equilibrium is a situation where no firm can increase profits by changing its price or output choices. 
And in the question answer video that is associated with this one, I have gone over a Nash equilibrium example. The Cordno model is fairly complicated. If you have not fully understood that, I don't think it's a very big deal. But just remember at least these two bullet points. Each firm determines profit maximizing quantity, assuming the other firm's output will not change. In the long run, change in price or quantity will not increase profits. This is one of the assumptions based on which the model is built. And the final point that you need to remember is that as the number of firms increases, the equilibrium point, according to the Scordno model, moves towards perfect competition. And then we have the dominant firm model. One firm is assumed to have the lowest cost structure and a significant proportion of the market. The dominant firm, the dominant firm essentially sets the price for the industry. All other firms are price takers and set their output quantities according to this price. Supply curves and market structures. Under perfect competition, a firm's short-run supply curve is the proportion of the firm's under perfect competition, a firm's short-run supply curve is the portion of the firm's short-run marginal cost curve above its average variable cost. And we've seen this before. Below the average variable cost, the firm should just shut down. The firm's long-run supply curve is the portion of the firm's long-run marginal cost curve above its average total cost. In the long run, if the cost is below average total cost, then the firm should shut down. Under monopolistic competition, oligopoly and monopoly, supply functions are not well defined. Neither the marginal cost curves nor average cost curves are the supply curves. But in perfect competition, the marginal cost curve is the supply curve above the average variable cost. To identify the type of market, you need to look at these factors. The number of firms in the market, if there are lots of firms, then you are leaning towards perfect competition. Their market shares, if the market shares are very low, then you are leaning towards perfect competition. If the market shares are high, then it might be more like an oligopoly. The nature of the competition, if the competition is purely based on price, then it is most, pure, most probably your perfectly competitive market. The availability of substitute goods, if there are lots of substitutes available, then it is perfect competition. If there are substitutes, but there is some differentiation, they are not perfect substitutes, then you are moving towards monopolistic competition. If the barriers to entry and exit are low, then it's on the side of perfect competition. If the barriers are high, then you are more towards oligopoly or even monopoly. If you found this lecture helpful, then I'll be very grateful if you can do three things for me. Number one, like this video. Number two, like my Facebook page. And number three, visit analystforum.com and there add my logo to your studying with profile. You can see this slide for help on how to do that. Thank you very much and good luck with your studies.